Hey, what's up, everybody? Matt Stryker here for a fight, and joining me is Mox. Mox, how you doing, man? Uh, pretty good. Can't complain. Nice. Won't do you any good anyway. May 16th is the debut of Cage Fighter Worldwide. It's here on Fight. There's a 7 p.m. staggered start time. So no matter where you are in the world, outside the U.S. or the Caribbean, 7 p.m. is the start time. Now, I spoke with Jay Rizzo about this. I wanted to get your thoughts. How important was it for you to give your audience, the combat sports fan, first dibs on this movie? Uh, definitely, I think, because, uh, you know, uh, Jesse, the director of this film, had this uh, idea for the script, you know, in his head for years. And, you know, when it came time that it actually became reality, it definitely makes sense to uh, have big names from the world of professional wrestling and myself, Christian, and uh, big names from uh, the mixed martial arts world, Chuck Liddell, Luke Rockhold, and uh, added to the cast to just kind of uh, bring an extra little, if you're a fan of Chuck Liddell, maybe you might check the movie out. So you have like the wrestling audience and the uh, MMA audience is kind of the, uh, kind of the target audience for, to give, you know, first dibs. Uh, so definitely works out. And uh, Fight TV is the perfect, perfect venue. Obviously, uh, we have a relationship with Fight TV at AEW, our international uh, audience and so forth, you know, watch on Fight. And uh, the cool thing about the way they're promoting this is kind of as an event. Uh, you know, right now people can't go out and go to the movies and can't go to a big sporting event, you know, so you can kind of treat this like a night out, uh, even though you're staying in, you kind of, uh, make plans and make it appointment viewing and kind of right now we're utilizing technology and so forth to all kind of stay connected and everything. So like the way I'm talking to you right now. So it's kind of a cool thing where the whole world can kind of do something all at the same time and check this movie out uh, that premieres at the same time. I haven't even personally seen it yet. I'm waiting till May 16th, like everybody else and just kind of sit down and watch it uh, as it premieres. So it's kind of a cool uh, event and a creative way to, to do a movie during this time. Yeah, I don't think it's lost on any of us how important this is. You've alluded to it. This is something that everyone, when people are starving for content right now, Mox. So I, I think it's a tip of the cap to you and the producers that you, you take into consideration your, your fan base. Now, I want to talk about, there's mainstream appeal here as well, just beyond combat sports. Gina Gershon is in the film. Chuck Liddell has crossed over. Are you having designs on pretty much taking over the world? Um. I consider myself a professional wrestler, uh, first and foremost. Um, you know, I, I don't have designs on, you know, going out to try to be the biggest star in Hollywood or anything like that. Wrestling, will, uh, as long as my body can still hold up and do it, will always be my priority. But uh, a project like this, you know, I'm always on the lookout for anything that's fun or cool or creatively satisfying. And this just uh, kind of just fell into my lap right at the right moment, right when I kind of became available to do stuff. And uh, they were looking for somebody with some name value in pro wrestling. And uh, it kind of rolls all my interest into one, you know, pro wrestling and training and fight choreography and movies and, uh, you know, acting and performing and so forth. So it was really seemed like a really fun project to be a part of and uh, to learn some things along the way. And, uh, you know, anything that seems fun or cool, like the chances I've got to do movies and, uh, you know, action movies or this to that. It was really fun, you know, fight choreography and doing stunts and stuff like that. I always really get a kick out of it. It doesn't even really feel like work. It's really fun. And, uh, you know, me and Alex, the guy who uh, who's a, who plays the uh, the lead role, of the, the hero in, in this film, we spent about three days putting the fight together. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of experience in fight choreography and so forth, which is a whole other art and skill in itself. And He's a legitimate professional fighter and uh, kind of trying, trying to transition into a world where you get punched in the face, not for real here in, uh, in movies. <laughs> and so when you had his, uh, his knowledge and le legitimacy of, of uh, fighting and so forth combined with me, obviously, as a pro wrestler, you know, my forte is telling stories and creating drama and so forth like that. So it was a good kind of a combustible mix of creativity trying to, Okay, what what happened now? Maybe the bad guy goes up for a little bit. Now the good guy comes up, and then and to try to create the ebb and flow. I learned a lot about you know 
uh, filming and stuff like that. And it was, it was really, it was really a fun experience. So I'm always on the lookout for anything where I can learn or, uh, be creative or have fun. And, uh, you know, I think the rewards, you know, be they monetary or otherwise, you know, will come with that. So you mentioned three days to put together, uh, the, the scenes. That's a, a huge departure from let's just call it in the ring. As we say, how much of this experience has, will now inform your pro wrestling in ring work? Uh, definitely. I lear learned a lot about, uh, a lot of, you know, obviously, you know, I didn't want to, you know, it's a, I'm playing a fictional character and stuff, but the fictional character still got to look like he knows what he's doing in the ring. So I, I had to work really hard on uh, learning, you know, proper striking techniques and different uh, stuff that uh, I might not have known before. And uh worked really hard training for months ahead of time and training with Alex and stuff to, you know, make these uh, things look realistic. It's, it so you know you never know like like for instance like i'm not very good at like throwing kicks right so like i worked really hard for like months on like trying to like throw a perfect leg kick a perfect body kick and uh we felt pretty confident and i was like all right yeah this is pretty cool but then when you're putting the fight scene together you got to kind of think in the terms of character and my character in this movie is like less refined and skilled uh, just a roughhouse brawler type, you know, so I wouldn't really throw nice pretty kicks. The character wouldn't. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, that kind of went to waste. But then maybe, but maybe if I'm in pro wrestling and I want to kick somebody, now I kind of have that tool in my toolbox, so to speak, you know, so you can always pick stuff up along the way. And uh, in wrestling, you know, a lot of times I try to uh, free flow and not have too much of a complete plan when I'm out in the ring. And I like to do stuff kind of off the cuff sometimes. And you never know, you might have some tool in your toolbox or some move or a spot or a nuance or a wacky bump that you take or something that you might have in your toolbox that you did one time four years ago and it just pops into your head in the moment in a match on pay-per-view and you do it and it's awesome. So it's always, it's cool to have uh, more tools you can have in your toolbox that you never know when you're going to need them. It's kind of like Batman's utility belt. You know, you don't need your, you don't know you're going to need a smoke bomb until you need it kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah. What has been your uh, mixed martial arts background? Um, I trained jujitsu in 2008 around then. And I've done a good amount of that over the years. It's kind of really hard to keep up with, though, when you're on the WWE schedule for as long as I was. So, like, I would always be trying to go and uh, I started going to where I train now is Extreme Couture here in Vegas. I started going there a few years ago, I was trying to always get in, like, on my day off on Wednesday. And after a while, I just kind of, like, I was so beat up and dealing with so many injuries. It's like, couldn't be getting beat up on my off days too. And I kind of <laughs> fell out of it. But then once I left Dota, you know, free time, I really uh, tried to prioritize that and put that back into my life on a consistent basis. So uh, doing a lot of submission grappling and, and stuff like that. Uh, I amateur wrestled like basically my whole life year round until I started pro wrestling. So I had pretty solid base uh, grappling and stuff, but being in there with, uh, with Alex, who's a professional and, you know, doing little kind of hitting the pads with him and fake sparring with him and stuff like that. And seeing how fast his hands are and how hard he can kick. And it's all so pretty and beautiful. It just is like scary. Like, dude, you could kick my head off in a blink of an eye and I couldn't do nothing about it. So luckily uh, I survived the movie without getting killed. <laughs> So you had this meteoric rise uh, to the top and you've had injuries, even an infection that not only almost derailed your career, it almost ended your life. Do you take pause now to realize that you are arguably one of, if not the hottest professional wrestlers today? Do you take a step back and realize how far you've come, Mox? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. I, uh, I'm so grateful for just my entire, uh, lot in life right now you know i have the most beautiful best friend of a wife in the world i got a, a nice little setup here in vegas uh i got my dogs and my truck and that's basically all i need in life you know and i get to do what i love to do for a living which is professional wrestling and have freedom to do other outside projects you know like this movie or anything else i want to do and can fill my time with just things that i like to do and i think if you uh you know more so than you know, if you go out there, if your job is if 
if your goal is just to become as famous as humanly possible, I mean, there are ways to do that and everything, but I think the way I look at it is just, uh, I just follow my, from now on, I'm just going to follow my passions and do the things that I like to do, play my music the way I want to play it. And, uh, you know, you only get so much time on this earth, so, you know, I want to spend my time doing the things that, that, interest me and they're fun for me and I think uh like I said before the rewards kind of will I think will just come naturally be they you know uh notoriety or money or whatever you know like I think that'll just that'll come if you just follow your uh your instincts and your heart I think that's kind of the uh kind of a theme throughout uh AEW with a lot of the guys involved in AEW is like you know look at the young bucks who've always just done things their way uh, flouted every convention that's been thrown at them, uh, created their own YouTube show that became a success, created their own show All In, which was a huge success. And now, you know, they're not only the best tag team in the world, they're executives in this company. Uh, if you look at Chris Jericho, who uh, has done everything under the sun there is to do. And, I mean, like he just had an idea to create his own cruise. So when he just went out and did it and created his own cruise. And now that's a huge success and some people are going to look forward to every year. So if you just kind of follow your your passions and your interests and you, you know, uh, go big or go home with them, you know, I think uh, where you end up as far as on the scale of like whether you're famous or a hot star or whatever, I mean, it'll it'll all just come naturally if you just stay true to yourself. I think that's great advice. So when I first met you uh, on the independence and then in – the hallowed halls of some other places. There were guys like Phil Brooks, CM Punk, Darren Matthews, William Regal that mentioned that people aren't really sure where the character ends and the real person begins. Is that by design or do you truly blend who you are into your character? Because I think that's what fans connect with. I definitely, I've always tried to blend who I am into my character. When I started, uh, you know, in my early years of wrestling, when I was trying to figure it all out, I was just trying to be what I thought you're supposed to be to get like a job somewhere or, you know, like was a WWE or whoever else looking for, wear trunks, whatever, you know, <laughs> get jacked up. Like I, I was just kind of trying to be what I thought it was supposed to be. As soon as then, you know, with some experience, once I stopped caring and said, I don't need whatever and just started doing whatever I wanted to do and just kind of becoming my real self and embracing kind of some negative elements of my personality and life. Then it, then things started to really take off for me and I started to figure it out. And I think I'm far from the only example of that. Once you start just kind of doing, doing you, uh, you kind of figure it out. So I've always tried to be as much true to my actual personality, you know, whether that's, even if it's, you know, doing humorous stuff, you know, uh, or serious stuff or whatever it is. And now I'm in a position to where I have nobody tell me what to do or anything like that. So the character on TV will change depending on the situation. If I'm a bad guy, a good guy, whether I'm here in Japan or whatever, right. but it'll be pretty much my real self. You know, if I'm talking in the ring, I'm saying what I mean is coming from the heart. It's what I really feel kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I think that's the big uh, reason for AEW's success is a lot of everybody's being themselves and really truly, you know, if they're, if they're talking, they're talking from the heart and they really mean it. And I think it really stands out in uh, professional wrestling when uh, you're truly being an authentic performer. Absolutely. I think the authenticity jumps off the screen. I, I believe it's why so many fans of MMA can watch your matches and a lot of the matches that we see at AEW. And there is really no suspension of disbelief because the things that they do are the things that they're seeing in the ring. I want to talk a little bit about what was it like working with Chuck Liddell? Oh, it was awesome, man. You know, I, I didn't have too many scenes with him, but, uh, you know, for me, I'm such a huge fan of him for so long. And, uh, you know, I don't really follow like a regular sports like basketball or football or anything like that so much anymore uh so like Chuck Liddell was like I was like a little kid and he's like Mickey Mantle kind of thing I was like this is so awesome just it's just so trippy you know he's the baddest of all 
bad MFers that ever existed on the planet. And just such a cool, chill, down to earth guy to just sit and shoot the crap with. Uh, especially uh, on a movie set, you know, you have so much downtime where you're just sitting around in between shots where you got to reset the camera over hours and hours and hours. So there's a lot, it's good to be around people who are cool to talk to. And like, I have, I have as a fan, I could have like a million questions to like ask Chuck Liddell, you know, and he's so easy to talk to and fun is really a cool guy to shoot the breeze with. So I'm glad to have uh, made that connection. All right. Speaking of connections, what was it like to work with Jay Rizzo? Uh, he actually, he's working as executive producer on the movie. He actually kind of got me the gig. He was the one who, called me and said hey I'm working on this it might have been a day or two after I kind of became available contractually it was like yeah I'm working on this thing they're looking for a, a a guy with some like name value in wrestling and uh they sent me this script and I took it over and I went instantly like oh I can play this guy so Christian's kind of uh if the movie's awesome you have Christian to thank for it if it sucks you have Christian to blame for the whole thing it's all his fault <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, and I, I think I think Bird will attest to that as well. Uh, before we get to a couple of questions from the beloved world of social media, uh, there's a great advertisement for AEW that I see on television all the time. It it shows Scorpio Sky running into the ocean and surfing, and it, and it shows the Bucks playing with their kids and things like that. How important is it to the AEW locker room for the combat sports audience to see them as real people as well as international athletes and superstars? Uh, I think it's huge. You know, that's that's what I like. I mean, there's there's tons of different presentations in pro wrestling. You know, there might be a character that is mystical or some kind of supernatural or something, and that works often and can be really cool. Uh, I, you know, I, I as a big fan of, I'm a big fan of a real sports presentation and like these people being real people. I think that's what. You know, people watch MMA, you know, they want to see knockouts and violence and stuff. But what it really draws them is the the personalities and the stories. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, selling an MMA pay-per-view and selling a wrestling pay-per-view is basically the same thing. You're trying to hook the audience through things like countdown shows and stuff like that. You're trying to hook the audience into caring about these people and watch them resolve this conflict in a, in a ring or an octagon or something like that. So I personally, like, I want to... If I'm going to watch Scorpio Sky wrestle, I want to see him surfing. I want to know that he's a California dude. I want to know everything about him so that I can invest more, uh, invest more into, into the fight. You know, I was watching uh, Invicta FC the other day. They had like a, like a four, four woman or eight woman tournament, but it was like a one night tournament and which you don't see very often anymore. And uh, my, uh, one of my coaches, his sister-in-law, was uh, in the tournament. So, you know, I know I I didn't never even met her because I have a connection with her because she's one of my coaches' tra uh, sister-in-laws. I felt like I was watching like my own friend or family member in the fight, you know. So, and I, I know a little bit about her because he was telling me a little bit about her before I sat down and watched this. And I was so emotionally invested. She got to the finals and did a great job. And I was so emotionally invested because I felt like I knew her. And that makes all the difference in the world. If I hadn't known that person or didn't know as much about her, I would have just been watching some fights and I'd enjoy them. But when you have that emotional connection to somebody, then you're that's when you're on the edge of your seat, when you're jumping off the couch screaming, and you're like, oh, get her, you know? And uh, the more... You can get to know somebody and know more about them, where they come from, what drives them, what their makes them tick, their history. The more you're going to be emotionally invested in the story. Yeah, 100% agree. Emotional investment is incredibly important. On May 16th, 7 p.m. all around the globe, outside of the U.S. and the Caribbean, for 24 hours only, your fan base will be able to be emotionally invested in Cage Fighter. Um, before I let you go, just a few more questions. You're a hard guy to get, man. The, the press is just all over you. Uh, a couple of things. One, what's the one takeaway that you'd want fans to take after they watch Cage Fighter? Uh, definitely, especially during uh, strange times like this. The main gist of the story, all the other entertainment elements aside, the main gist of the story is this guy, uh, the main character in the film, the worst thing in his mind that could happen happens to him and he's broken professionally personally financially he hits we've all been there <laughs> the bottom of the barrel yeah yeah and uh 
it's about, you know, it looks like the world has ended, you know, the something he couldn't ever imagine happened, happened. The unthinkable. And a lot of people right now in the world are, they can't imagine that they lost their job, you know, six months ago, they couldn't ever predicted that. Now they're going to have to dig out of a financial hole or, or, you know, some people are dealing with even worse things than that. Uh, businesses are closing, stuff like that. So this, the main gist of the film is about hitting rock bottom and crawling all the way back up to where you were before and even farther and not, uh, and, and not backing down in the face of adversity and digging in your heels and doing the work and staying positive and, and so forth. And that's a message everybody's going to need, not just right now, but definitely going forward. You know, once, once the world starts to normalize a little bit, a lot of people are still going to be affected by this and have to dig themselves out of some holes, you know, financially or, uh, you know, otherwise. So, uh, you know, it's a good time for a message like that. As much as a, a movie can help, you know, in the long run, uh, you know, it's a good message to take and hopefully a good, you know, 90 minute or so distraction. All right. So now let's go to the wonderful world of social media, Mox. <laughs> First question. Uh, there seems to be a lot of wrestlers that are free agents right now. Is there anyone that you would like to see in AEW? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I hesitate to single anybody out because I don't want to leave anybody out Understood. because there's so many of those uh, people available right now uh, could be good fits. And uh, the cool thing about it is, you know, take anybody from that list that, you know, might be a recent free agent, take anybody from that list. Some of them you could put right into AEW as is, but now's an opportunity for them all to change and evolve and become something different. Take uh, um, Curtis Axel, for example. You see Curtis Axel outside of WWE, if he were to show up in AEW or New Japan or Ring of Honor or wherever it is, you're going to see a new version of Curtis Axel. It's a, it'll be a new, well, he'll be Joe Hennig. It, it'll be a new guy, a different energy, and a new product, basically. So all these talents on, on the list that anybody you could think of, we don't even know what they're going to look like. They could be the best version of themselves we've ever seen, and that could be amazing, you know? So who knows where everybody's going to end up, but the exciting part is who knows what they're going to be and what they're going to involve evolve into you know i could have at in the list of people you know you're probably thinking of could be one of my greatest opponents and we don't even that has a character that hasn't even debuted yet that we don't even know yet so the possibilities are endless and that's the real exciting part yeah there's an old saying that the caterpillar thought its life was over and then it turned into a butterfly a lot of these talents will shed their skins and like you said evolve all right, the next question, uh, as of this interview, Cain Velasquez is now a free agent. Would you want to tangle with Cain Velasquez? Oh, hell yeah, for sure. <laughs> I would take any opportunity to get in, to get in the ring with, uh, you know, anybody like that, you know, it's always a, you know, it's an honor to get on the mat and, and share the mat and tangle with an All-American like Jake Hager, you know? Sure. Uh, it's an honor to get on the mat with anybody that you can learn something from and uh, create something with. So definitely, man, I'd uh, relish the opportunity to possibly get the shit kicked out of me by Cain Velasquez. <laughs> uh, the next question is, do you still watch independent wrestling? And if so, is there someone out there that has caught your eye that the world should know? Yeah, I check out, uh, you know, especially right now with a lot of free time, I try to watch a lot of wrestling. Uh, my wife gets sick of it, so I got to pick my times when she's busy doing other stuff where I can uh, throw on some wrestling. Um, you know, I was just watching uh, one of the last things that still seemed, seemed to have taped in front of a crowd was uh, MLW. I guess I don't know if you consider that an independent, but uh, I was just watching that. That's a pretty good show. Uh, they got a lot of good guys, you know, Jacob. Fatu, uh, Filthy Salma Lawler. Uh, one of my favorite guys out there that's not in AEW or WWE is Davey Boy Smith Jr. I think he's uh, a, just an incredible all-around wrestler. I like the whole package that he brings to the table. You know, that's a guy that I could definitely see uh, becoming way bigger than it than he's ever been in the not-too-distant future. A guy I would relish the opportunity to get in the ring with. Uh, 
and there are uh yeah, there's a lot of a lot, lot of great talent out there, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to go watch independent. Or I think it's like independentwrestling.tv and High Spots and all. There's so many. Uh, is it High Spots a video thing? Uh, yeah, there's yeah, all yeah, the. They, they actually have so a lot many, of great uh, content here on Fight. Yeah, there's so much great independent wrestling content you can check out. You know, it's a good, it's a cool time to like go back and watch old stuff too, like old, watch like old CZW Best of the Best or. <laughs> Or old, uh, I was trying to find ECWA Super 8 from 2002. Right I couldn't alley, find man. it anywhere. It's and it bad. was, uh, oh, it's funny because I remember acquiring that tape because one of the guys who was one of, kind of one of my trainers and a guy that I like looked up to and I thought was the greatest wrestler ever was actually a guy named Matt Striker. Yeah, Brian Warman. SDR, Absolutely. YKR. Yes. He was in that tournament and he wrestled with Jamie Noble and they had a hell of a match that I haven't seen in years and years. It was like Jamie Noble, AJ Styles, Stryker, Pepper Parks, who yeah. is uh now the blade. Yes. And it was like that was eighteen years ago. That's crazy. But I, I remember that having that video and watching it. So if anybody can track that down, send that to me. There you go. I, I always used to say that the wrong striker got signed. I always thought that WWE thought they were signing Brian when they signed me and didn't figure it out until about 10 years after. Uh, on May 16th, you, along with everyone else, will be watching Cage Fighter. It's only available for 24 hours. Then afterwards, there's going to be a Q&A as well. Mox, is there anything else that you want to say to your fans before we let you go? We really appreciate your time. Uh, just definitely that we put – a lot of hard physical work into this movie uh you know hopefully it uh hopefully it's, it's awesome and comes off good and the fight scenes are awesome you know we didn't have stunt guys for this uh alex tore its groin was all black and purple and gross he couldn't even walk for the last day of filming i mean we didn't have stunt guys we had to take all these falls and slams and and stuff and get it all up off the mat a million times uh, we had to do it ourselves and it was really a physically grueling task over a few days 10 12 hour days to try to keep your adrenaline and keep warmed up and bring the intensity over a, over a long period of time it's different kind of energy management you know with all the starts and stops and stuff so we put in a, a hell of a lot of hard work a lot of people did so uh, i really hope uh, people enjoy it the labor of love Mox, I think I can say on behalf of all of your fans, one, we appreciate the sacrifice that you make with your body. We appreciate all your success. I know a lot of people are very happy to see you doing what you love. I uh, hope that you have a beautiful family. And on a personal note, I got to say that uh, it's nice to see one of the good guys win. So thank you, man. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. That's Mox, ladies and gentlemen. It's Cage Fighter, May 16th, 7 p.m. all across the world, outside the U.S. and the Caribbean, available only for 24 hours here on Fight. I'm Matt Stryker for Mox. We'll see you out there.